Hey everybody, uh, this is Josh, also known on YouTube as JM the Conqueror, and this is my second video tutorial. And this is a sequel to the last one I made. Uh, in this one, I'm going to show you how to bring an object into XSI, or you can pretty much use any 3D application you want, but uh, XSI is the one I'm comfortable with and the one I use. But uh, I'm going to show you how to cross thread it. And before I get into that, let me explain um, a few things. In the last tutorial, I was using a sphere, but in this one I'll be using a cube. The reason is, a cube is a straight object, and that's what we want when we bring it into ZBrush. What I mean by straight object is, it's a non-organic object. It's an object that doesn't have much curvature, and it's a, it's got more straight points than curved points, or curved edges. Uh, so, yeah, I'll be using the cube for an example. Now, in the last tutorial, um, we used a 3D sphere. Well, I did. And uh, when I was laying the UVs out, you'll notice that a lot of times in traditional manner, you're supposed to uh, mark the seams of the object before you do all that. And that's a good idea, but that's only ideal if you're going to uh, lay out the UVs in a fashion that's suitable for uh, manual texturing. Uh, if you wanted to bring it into. Um, Photoshop or something like that. You know, that's that's what you do that for. But with ZBrush, it really doesn't matter. It could be. Uh, I mean, it's you, you want to try to keep it even, but it's it's not a necessity. So I'm gonna explain how we're gonna do this. We uh, import uh, our non-organic object. Mine is a cube, so I'm gonna retrieve that right now. Um, so let me do that. I want to cooperate here. All right, desktop, desktop. Here we are. Okay, folder, one, square. All right. So this imported. Uh, you can see we got the uh, basic cube. Now, what do I mean by cross threading? Well, with cross threading. Uh, basically what it is, is we're going to cross thread this object, basically we're going to put more edges on it so it maintains its figure because there's two different types of sublevels. There's subdividing and then there's subsurfaces. With subdividing it's just, uh, let me give you an example here. Subdividing is like this. It uh, basically just augments the geometry, adds more geometry onto what you already have. Now, if I were to subdivide it, just to give you a quick thing here, well, if you want a preview of the subdividing in XSI over on the num lock, or I'm saying the numpad, you got the plus and the minus key. Go plus to add uh, previous subdivisions to it. Now, I don't think this is adding real subdivisions to it. This is just showing you what it would look like if it did. So, basically, uh, subsurfaces smooths out the object. It's a smoothing group. Right, it, it takes all the geometry and packs it closer together and it smooths out the edges. Now, say you didn't want to do that. Say, uh, say you have a weapon or something that you wanted to detail, but you want it, you want it to keep its figure. Well, that's what we're going to use uh, subdividing for now. And exercise can be done with, like this under modify. You go poly mesh, and then you go up to subdivide polygons or edges, or you can just use shift D. That's a shortcut. So. That's what that'll do. Now, we uh, sub as subsurfaces again, you can see how it maintains a little bit more of its shape. Right? If we do it again, maintains a little bit better. So you went up that many levels. Now it, it uh, does it fairly well. So anytime you want to bring a non-organic object into a ZBrush, always remember that you have to uh, you have to add more. Uh, you have to augment the geometry. Add more geometry. To, to the overall model, not not su not subsurfaces, just you know subdividing it. So uh, this this will uh, help it maintain its figure. Because uh, what uh, what ZBrush is going to do, it's going to add subsurfaces to it. And if you if you don't have it uh, if you don't have it all uh, threaded up like this, cross threaded, uh, it's gonna it's gonna deform your object pretty bad. So you always make sure you do that. And 
if you want to undo it in XSI, because we're going to be undoing it anyway, you just go over to Scene, uh, select the object, go to Poly Mesh, and that'll give you pretty much every operation you've done to the object so far. Now, say, uh, say we were confronted with a problem like this. We, uh, say you're bringing an object into XSI or any other app that's not even. Say, um, give you an example here. Well, Okay, I brought this out, and now instead of a cube, we have a bar. How do we make this bar even, so that, um, so that when we go to uh, bring in the ZBrush for uh, detailing, all the subdividing around it is even? Well, an XSI, this is actually not that hard to do. If you wanted to, you could uh, add a little bit to it, like that. Now see the thing is when you bring it into zebra, see this side is even. The sides are even, but you know, long ways it's uh it's kinda longer, you know, than it is, you know, across. So we want to change this. We want to add some geometry to this, but we want to do it in a simple way so it doesn't take that long. Well this can be done by uh this. Uh, we just go up to split edge tool. We zoom in a little bit. What this will do is uh, see how every other one of these edges turns red. All we have to do is hold this on there and use the middle mouse wheel, click it, and that'll thread that all around there for us. See that? Now you can do them to all of them. Now, say you got a different problem. Say, uh, just for example, if some part of this geometry was poking out somewhere and you 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 couldn't make them even just by doing that. How could you do it manually? Well, that's also pretty simple too. Just go to Poly Mesh again, all the way up to here where it says Add Edge Tool. With this tool, we can uh, put it pretty much on any edge, bring it across to another edge, and that'll add another edge there for us. But if you were trying to get it as evenly as you possibly could, now there you got a problem because uh, this is kind of hard to get even if, uh, you know, if even if you're using these 3D viewports it's, um, it, sometimes it can be tricky to tag the right parts to straighten it out so how can we do this? okay it's pretty simple we go up to scene, cube, poly mesh see where we uh, added that edge operation we press enter and that will give us this little uh, ratio tool and what this is going to do is when we scale the value up or down, it's going to move that other point up and down that edge. See that? So that's a that's a pretty useful thing. So you always want to you always want to study your application and you know see what kind of tools are built into it. Uh, XSI is a really great tool for modeling and animation and pretty much everything else. It's got a Giga Polygon core that can um, it can render like um, you know millions upon millions of polygons at a time. So just remember that. Um, go ahead and delete this. All right, get that out of there. Make sure the point's gone. Is the point gone? No, it's not gone. Get rid of that point there. Okay, so now we can pretty much uh, cross thread this the way we need it. I don't know if cross threading is a real term, but that's what I use. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's the way to do it. Um, uh, let me explain to you what's going to happen though if um, if you don't have uh, all the subdividing even. Basically when you go into ZBrush, like I told you before, it's going to, uh, when, you, when you add more geometry, more subgeometry in ZBrush, it's going to disproportion the model. It's going to disfigure it and it's going to make it look all ugly. But when you, uh, when you cross thread it, you know, it's, it's, so it uh, maintains its geometry, uh, you, you're going to maintain some of that geometry so it doesn't completely distort the model. But uh, if it if some parts aren't even, the details aren't going to show up even. So you want to make sure uh, you want to make sure it's even as possible. So all that being said, uh, sorry if I stuttered or if I paused or halted. So all that being said, we go ahead and export your object file again. And yeah, uh, good luck. Next we'll be going into ZBrush and I'll explain a little bit in that.